In today's video, you're going to find out what's going to happen to your printer if you leave it uh, available to many people for a long time. Hey, today we're talking about 3D printing. It's complicated if you're just getting started, but you shouldn't have any problems printing PLA, especially using default profiles or stock options. These should work out of the box, and if you're facing any problems, the reasons behind it are probably mechanical in nature. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to remove mechanical issues and to make printing slightly easier. I borrowed an Ender 3 from Hackspace as I've acquired Ender 3 version 2 and I wanted to draw some parallels. Because the Ender 3 was in a Hackspace used by everyone, it needed some serious attention. It's really messy and I needed to do a couple of mechanical jobs before I could actually get a decent print out of it. But before I could start doing anything, just look at it, it needs some serious cleaning. Now that the Ender 3 is free from any debris, we can actually start the maintenance. If you didn't assemble the printer yourself, it's good to check for the rigidity of the structure. If you notice any play, it's obviously needed to be adjusted. Also, you can use a square with a right angle to check if the frame is actually built through. If you notice any inaccuracies, simply loosen up the screws, adjust the angles to make sure the angles are right and fixed in place, and then tighten the screws back again. Just don't forget there are additional two screws on each side at the bottom of the 3D printer. Not maintained roller wheels are probably something that causes the most defects in your 3D prints, so look after your rollers. Check the rollers for damage and make sure they glide smoothly across all the rails. If you notice the rolls stopping or having a buildup of dirt, it means you probably need to spend some time cleaning them and adjusting again. Instead of adjusting roller wheels on the fly, simply remove the bed and loosen up the belt driving the carriage. We're going to need to readjust this anyway, so it's a good practice to do both things at the same time. If you're dealing with a print bed, I would strongly recommend you to remove the print bed entirely and check the wheels itself. As you can see, there is a slight play on one of the wheels, so I'm going to adjust it. But first, I'm going to tighten every single screw to make sure that the wheels are firmly in place. Just don't clamp the screws too tight. Once you're done, slide in the carriage back on its rails and check for any excess play. Now on one side, you'll notice the hexagonal standoffs, which can be used to adjust uh, the tension of the rollers. The carriage should travel without any friction. However, it should not have any play. The same principle applies for x-axis. If you notice any resistance, it's time to adjust the nuts. To access one of the nylon nuts, you'll have to remove the shroud from the hot end. It's also a good idea to service the hot end at the same time, so I'm going to simply remove the hot end so I could inspect the carriage. Start with nylon nuts. Once they're fixed in place, use the hex wrench to adjust one of the wheels. After that, double check the nylon nuts to make sure that the wheels are fixed in place. The carriage should glide freely without any resistance. If you look after your belts, they're gonna serve you for a long time. First inspect the belt and look for any problems with the teeth. Put the belt back in place and you can start tensioning it. If you have a tensioner, like on Ender 3 V2, then it's a simple job. Otherwise, secure the bolt so you can still move the tensioner and use a bit of force to put the tensioner at the right distance. Clamp the nuts again and your belt should be nice, stiff, but not too tight. Belt on the gantry, use your thumb to push the tensioner out and use the Allen key to tighten the two bolts holding the tensioner in place. Mm -hmm. 
It's actually a good idea to inspect the tubing as well. The fittings can cause the bite marks and if the fitting is damaged or something, it can seriously damage your Bowden tube as well. If you have a plastic extrusion system, filament can actually bite into the plastic over time and cause serious damage causing clogs. It's worth investing into a metal cage for that. Regardless of the extrusion system, take a closer look at the pulleys. Make sure they are on a level with the filament and properly adjusted with grub screws. If the pulleys are misaligned, it might cause the filament to slip and you'll have the problems with extrusion. And lastly, take a look at the clamp connecting Z rod to stepper motor. It should be secured in place and the rod lubricated. Servicing hot end and the nozzle is always a pain. While nozzles can be easily changed, sometimes they might be just jammed, so it requires a little bit of extra power using pliers to get them removed. Uh, it's the main issue for clogs, etc. So inspect your nozzle on a regular basis and always carry a pack of spurs. To properly maintain your hot end, you'll have to remove it from the carriage and it's bolted by two bolts. So get them removed. Then there is a grooves screw at the back and additional two bolts at the bottom of the hot end to get everything disassembled properly. Now, it should look really clean inside. If it doesn't, then uh, you have some cleaning to do. Now, remove the thermistor, be gentle and pull out gently so you wouldn't break the cable. And then try to push out the heating element. Now, that's gonna be probably a struggle if you don't maintain it correctly. Don't heat it up because metal will expand and will cause uh, two metals to uh, seize together. Uh, use a cold air and put it in the fridge if you have a serious problems. Keep both parts debris free so they wouldn't seize again. You can use a knife and the sandpaper to scrape the leftovers and keep it nice and smooth. Keeping the surfaces clean will assure better heat transfer between heating element and the block itself. Obviously it will prevent from seizing again. The only time you're allowed to use the blowtorch is to remove excess plastic from uh, the metal pipe. Heat the pipe and push a spare piece of bowden tubing through to remove any excess of filament from inside. Once everything is clean, you can start the assembly process by simply reversing the steps. Just be careful with the thermistor and don't pinch the wires too hard. A nice and clean hot end can be then put back together onto the carriage. Before you slide the tube in, inspect the fitting and make sure that the tube has been cut at the right angle to assure a snug fit. You don't have to level your bed before every print. If you do have to, that means you have some mechanical problems and you should really go through all the lists I've mentioned before. I level my bed every couple of weeks so each time I move the printer. If you've changed the print surface or disassembled the bed for any of the reasons, you probably want to recheck the Z position stop. First, tighten the springs so there would be just a little bit space between the coils. Don't do it too much and then move the print head to printing position. It should be just touching the surface of the bed. Loosen up the screws from the Z-stop, move it to correct position, and then tighten the screws again, and you're ready to start leveling. Home all axes, and then move the print head into position for adjusting. It's a good idea to lift it up slightly so it wouldn't scratch your uh, bed surface and then lower it again in the right position. Use a piece of paper to actually determine how high you are from the print bed. The nozzle should actually pinch the paper ever so slightly but you should still be able to remove the paper without much friction. With time you'll get better at this and you'll figure out what is the proper distance between nozzle and the bed surface. I repeat this for each corner three times. This way I know that each corner has been leveled successfully. Now once you've done that for every single corner, heat up the bed for five minutes and let it cool down. Check if the bed is still leveled and re-level it again. Heating up and cooling down will stretch metal parts and if there is any disalignment it will be discovered in the next leveling. This way your bed's gonna be nicely trimmed and ready for printing. 
my collection of 3D printers is expanding. So right now I have Ender 3, which is upgraded. I also have the version 2 of Ender 3 and the latest resin from Creality, which is LD002H. So soon enough, I'll be posting reviews for individual machines and let you know which printer is the best, whether you should try to upgrade Ender 3 or get Ender 3 version 2.0. As for now guys, thank you so much for watching. If you have any tips or what else you do while you're maintaining your printers, leave it in the comment section below and I'm definitely gonna share those with my readers. If you want to know more about what I do, then just simply follow me on social media and you'll always get notification when a new video is up. As for now guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, bye.